Another benefit of selfies. Researchers at the University of Washington have developed a smartphone app that is able to detect the early signs of pancreatic cancer by analyzing user selfies. Bilirubin is a bile pigment produced when the liver breaks down old red blood cells. One of the symptoms of pancreatic cancer is jaundice, caused by an accumulation of bilirubin in the body. The Billy Screen app is used in conjunction with a 3D printed box that controls light exposure in the eye. The app can also be paired with paper glasses that helps calibrate color. After the user has taken a selfie, the app's computer vision algorithms and machine learning tools can spot even the slightest increase in bilirubin levels in the sclera of the eye. The app is designed to help people get early treatment if needed. However, the results are not as definitive as a blood test. Keep watching for more on cancer research. Teenager invents breast cancer detection bra. A teenager in Mexico won the top prize at the Global Student Entrepreneur Awards for inventing a bra that can detect breast cancer. The breast cancer detection bra is equipped with 200 tactile biosensors. Users must wear the bra for at least 60 minutes a week to obtain accurate measurements. The bra maps out the surface of the breast and surrounding areas and records changes in skin temperature and texture. An increase in shape, size, or temperature of a breast could suggest more blood flow, which might signal the existence of some types of breast cancer. The bra is currently only at the prototype stage, and it may take at least two years for the device to pass the certification process. Israeli scientists show how melanoma spreads in the body. Scientists at Tel Aviv University have made a landmark discovery on melanoma, a brutally aggressive form of skin cancer that kills a person every 52 minutes. Melanoma forms in the epidermis of the skin. At this stage, the cancer cells are not able to spread as they have no access to blood vessels. Researchers discovered that the cancer sends out tiny vesicles containing microRNA to the dermis layer. The vesicles induce changes in the dermis, including features of cancer-associated fibroblasts. The changes enable the dermis to absorb the cancer cells. The real threat of melanoma begins when the cancer cells have access to blood vessels and are spread to vital organs such as the brain, lungs, liver, and bones. The team also found two chemicals that could stop the spread of melanoma in its initial stages. One is capable of stopping the vesicles from being sent to the dermis, and the other capable of preventing the reaction to the vesicles in the dermis itself. Cuba developing a vaccine for lung cancer. America wants in. What's the first thing you think of when you see someone puffing on a stogie? Yup, Cubans, the finest cigars the world has to offer. But it may surprise you to find out Cuba is actually becoming known for its success in treating lung cancer. A new vaccine, Simovax, has been in development in Cuba for a quarter of a century. Simovax targets a growth factor in the body called EGF, which allows cancer to survive. By attacking EGF, the cancer starves and its growth slows, extending a patient's life for as long as an extra year and a half. Early studies with Simovax have shown minimal side effects like nausea, fever, and vomiting, but it's a small price to pay for less cancer. The drug's been used to treat 5,000 cases of lung cancer worldwide, but with FDA approval pending, testing could still be a ways away in America. After the U.S. made nights with Cuba in December 2014, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo went on a trade mission to Havana last year to get the ball rolling to bring the drug to America. Now, there's more hope than ever for the estimated 224,000 plus Americans living with lung cancer. Malaria vaccine could lead to general cure for cancer. Scientists researching a vaccine against malaria in pregnant women may have accidentally discovered an effective weapon against cancer. Scientists from the University of Copenhagen and the University of British Columbia have identified that the carbohydrate the malaria parasite attaches itself to in the placenta of a pregnant woman is identical to a carbohydrate present in cancer cells. Scientists have created the protein that the malaria parasite uses to attach to the placenta in a laboratory and have added a toxin. The combination of the malaria protein and toxin finds cancer cells, is absorbed, then the toxin is released inside, causing the cancer cells to die. 
Research groups from the two universities have tested thousands of samples, from brain tumors to leukemias, and have found that the malaria protein is able to attack more than 90% of all types of tumors. The drug was tested on mice implanted with three types of human tumors, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, prostate cancer, and metastatic bone cancer. The mice that were given doses of protein and toxin showed far higher survival rates than the untreated mice. Researchers are now working towards being able to conduct human trials. They say the earliest possible time frame would be in four years. Elephant gene could help in the fight against cancer. In a study published this week in the Journal of the American Medical Association, scientists revealed they have discovered a gene in elephants that could help the fight against cancer. Elephants, similar to humans, have lifespans of around 70 years or more, but they have 100 times more cells than humans and their cells rarely mutate into cancer. Only 4.8% of known elephant deaths are related to cancer, while for humans, cancer-related deaths are between 11 and 25%. Scientists have found that African elephants have 20 copies of a gene called TP53, which creates a protein that suppresses tumors. Humans, on the other hand, inherit only one TP53, one allele from each of their parents. If one of them is defective, cancer is certain to develop sooner or later. When there is DNA damage, the gene churns out copies of its P53 protein, and it either stops the cells from dividing so the DNA can be repaired, or destroys the affected cell so it won't pass on potentially harmful mutations. Tumor biology specialist Dr. Trevor Graham told the LA Times that reinforcing the protection offered by TP53 in humans would be enough to prevent human cells from becoming cancerous.